there are incredible opportunities in yield farming but harvesting and staking rewards on a daily basis across a diversified range of DeFi positions can start to feel like a full-time job. In this tutorial, I'll show you how I find smart contract functions and then build simple scripts to automate the process of yield farming. My name is James Buccini, and on this channel, I explore new and emerging technologies in decentralized finance. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. So this is the process that I'm trying to automate. This is Trisolaris, which is a decentralized exchange on Aurora, which is a blockchain by Near Protocol. And I have some funds in this TriUSDT pool. I'm already signed into Metamask, so I want to go ahead and claim some tokens. There's no transaction fees on Aurora right now, which means there's no downside to compounding as often as possible. Now I've claimed my rewards as a Tri token, and I want to stake those Tri tokens to earn another 30% on top of that. To do this, I simply hit max and click stake and confirm the transaction. So this is a fairly simple two-stage process, which anyone that's done yield farming will be very familiar with. This is kind of the bread and butter of what we're doing on a daily basis to compound our returns. What I want to do now is use the Block Explorer to figure out how this user interface is executing smart contract functions on the back end. So if we go into MetaMask, you can see we've got two transactions here. Let's have a look at this one first. Let's view it in a block explorer. If I zoom in here, you can see that we've got this interacted with address. This is the contract address that we're going to need to interact with to execute functions in our scripts. So we're going to need that. If we scroll down, we've got some more information here. We've got the input, and this is useful because we can use this function as a layout to build our ABIs. ABI stands for Application Binary Interface, and it's basically a layout for the function within the smart contract. It tells our script how to package the data to sign and then send off to the blockchain. So we've got harvest, which is the function name, and then we've got a integer, which is the PID, that's the pool ID, I believe, and then the address of where the tokens are going to. So the address we've used is our own address, and the pool ID, which we'll need for later, is number four, that's worth remembering. The other place that you can find information about these functions is in the GitHub repositories. Most cryptocurrency projects have open source code. So you can simply go in, have a look at the contracts. And if we do a search for the keyword harvest, which we know is the function name, we can scroll through these until we find the function for harvest. And that'll give us further information on what variables we need to pass through and what them variables are about and what they do. So now we've got some of those details, let's start putting together a script. I'm going to be using Node.js for this. This is a JavaScript runtime. If you're more familiar with Python, then you can, by all means you can use that, or pretty much any other coding language which has a Web3 library. The Web3 library that I'm actually going to be using is not Web3.js, it's a library called ethers.js. I find this slightly better, but I can use both, and I find them they do exactly the same thing. So whichever one you're more familiar with and you're more comfortable with is absolutely fine. If you've never used Node.js before, it's simply a computer program that we can use to execute JavaScript code from within a terminal. It's actually a great place to start if you're learning to program. I'm going to go through this code using the breakdown in the blog post to start with, because I think that does a better job of isolating each individual part rather than looking at the raw code as a whole. So the first thing we've got is we're importing some libraries. We're importing .n, we're using environmental variables to store the private key. That's obviously a big security risk. This is a hot wallet connected to the internet. So make sure you take precautions. If you're doing it with play money, you can do it on your local computer. But if you have any serious amount of funds, then you probably want to have a dedicated server or cloud instance, which is secure and just executing for this purpose. We're setting an RPC provider to mainnet.aurora.dev. If you're using Ethereum or one of the test nets, you probably want to use an Infura API key for that. And then we're setting up a signer account, which is like a digital wallet within the script using the private key, which is in the environmental variable. If you scroll down a bit more, we've got the ABIs here. And these are the function layouts that we spoke about earlier. So the one we looked at was this harvest function. And you can see it's pretty much just a structured layout of how we're going to send the data and what types of data we're sending to the function names. So the function's name is harvest. We've got an integer with PID and an address, which is an Ethereum address named two, which is where the tokens are going to be sent to. We've also got an ERC20 token ABI, and I've been really lazy here, and the only function I've imported is the balance of function, just so we can get ERC20 balances for the try and the X try token. And then we've got a staking ABI, 
which is the second stage where we want to stake those tri tokens and receive the X tri tokens, which is a like a, the X tri token is a receipt of the tri token being staked. These are both ERC20s, and the function there is just called enter and the amount that we want to stake. Then we need to set up the contract addresses, the tri token address, the X tri token address. These are the ERC20 token contract addresses. And then a try pool and a try staking pools, which is the pools that we interact with in that block explorer that we looked at. And then finally, we've got the pool ID, which is connected to this contract, and that's for the try USDT pool. If you had your funds in a different pool, you'd need to change this pool ID and the contract to suit the pool that you're using. The first thing we want to do is check the token balances to see how much X try or staked try tokens we've got and how many try code tokens we've got. We should have zero try and some X try at any one time because hopefully we've state all the try, otherwise there's an opportunity cost there. So we're going to set up an instance of the contract using the token contract address and the ABI. Then we're going to execute the balance of function, which every ERC20 token has this balance of function for our own address, which is also uh, held in the environmental variables. And then finally, we're just going to format that balance to a string so it's human readable and print that to the terminal using console log. So once we've printed the balance, the next thing we want to do is execute a signed transaction. We want to harvest whatever rewards we've got in the pool. So we're going to set up the pool contract, which is using the contract address and the pool ABI. We're then going to create a signed instance of that by connecting our signer account. This is our digital wallet. And then using that signed instance, we're going to execute the harvest function using the pool ID, which is number four, and our own address because we want the tokens to come back to ourselves. And then we'll just print the hash, which is the TX receipt for that transaction. Once the rewards have come through, the staking is very similar. We set up the contract using the contract address and the ABI. Then we're going to create a signed instance. We need to sign this one as well. And we're going to use the enter function on that contract with the balance. So we're going to actually need to get the balance between these because the balance is going to increase because the rewards are going to come back to our wallet. We get, need to get a new balance and then send this through to say how many tokens we wanted to stake. If we put all this together now, you can see the full code here. This is obviously available on GitHub, and there's a link in that in the description and in the blog post. The only slight difference is we've got these timeouts. I found there were some issues when I was executing this the first time with updating balances, and also the uh, nonce value wasn't updating correctly, so I was getting uh, parallel transactions if it was failing on that. So just slowing it down a little bit by using these almost like sleep functions within the script, just leave a two second gap between transactions. This is the code we just looked at to harvest the reward. We then check the balances, and then this is the code we need to stake them rewards. Finally, we'll print the balances at the end. So let's see what this looks like when we execute it. So we've got an initial balance of 0.45331 in the X try to stake tokens. We haven't got any try tokens in our account. We're now going to harvest our rewards. And then we check our balance again, and we actually have some try tokens. We've got 0.0012 try tokens in our account now, because they're the rewards we got from staking our LP position. Now we're going to go ahead and stake those rewards into the staking pool, which should give us some X try tokens. And our balance of the try should go back to zero. And you can see those try tokens have now gone back to zero because they've been staked as X try. Our X try balance has increased from the initial amount of 0.4533 to 0.4544. Note that all of this code is for educational purposes. It hasn't been audited and it's not production ready to be used for financial transactions. If you are going to start building your own scripts, then I'd suggest either starting with a test net where you're using play money or something like Aurora, which has free transactions and you can just put a tiny amount of funds in to start with so you can test it with funds that you're not afraid of losing. I hope you found this tutorial useful. There's more information in the blog post linked to in the description. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in DeFi. And thank you for watching to the end.